Okay, this podcast is going to go over how to configure the ASA uh, for routed mode. Uh, the ASA should be in the factory default config, and we're going to put it in place in our network as such between your router and the RichNet. Uh, we're going to temporarily put your PC into the ASA, and as long as your ASA is in uh, factory default mode, it'll have the IP address 192.168.1.1. And your PC should get an IP address uh, 192.168.1. something, probably .5 if it is the only thing connected. So first off, when I got my ASA out today, it was not in factory default mode. So we're going to ride up here and look. And here's how I knew it was not in, in factory default mode. It was wanting me to enter the initial configuration dialog. I didn't want to do that. So I, I hit Control Z. Then to verify that it was not in factory config, I did show run and scroll down. When it's in the default config, there are VLANs assigned to the Ethernet, uh, some of these interfaces, and they're not all shut down. And also the VLAN 1 interface has an IP address. So once you determine it is not in factory default configuration, a few steps to put it in factory default configuration, conf t, and then say no to that nonsense about phoning home, and then commands configure factory default it will run through all these commands, hit the space bar uh, to get down to the bottom. And once it's done, essentially what it has done is it has entered the commands needed for it to be in factory default config, but you need to copy that running config over to the startup config. So then you'll do the command, copy run start, and then you'll reload your ASA. And then when it comes up, it should be in the factory default config. And you can tell that by looking at the running configuration and VLAN 1 will have 192.168.1.1 for the IP. So that is how we make sure we are in the factory default config and get to the factory default config if we are not. Once you uh, get to the factory default config, then we want to connect to the interface uh, with HTTPS and we should go to 192.168.1.1 right? Uh, we need uh, the certificate from this to load into our Java because Java doesn't like the certificate, doesn't want to trust it. So we need to go to certificate. If you're using Chrome, go to more tools, developer tools, and then go to the security tab and then hit view certificate. Go over to the details and you're going to want to copy to file. Go through this little wizard, take in the defaults, browse to some place you can put it. I put it on the desktop and I called it ASA. So I've already done that. So I'm going to cancel. Once you do that, we can go ahead and edit our Java settings. Configure Java. And we want to go over to security. We want to manage certificates. We want to uh, do the user certificate for secure site. And we want to import that ASA certificate that we just saved to the desktop. open that and then we'll get out of here and maybe that might be all we need I don't know for sure so we're gonna once we get the certificate taken care of we're gonna install the ASDM launcher take the defaults it's gonna install alright now we need to go find uh, and launch it sometimes it puts it on the desktop in this case it doesn't look like it did so that launcher lives in uh, C program files x86 Cisco systems ASDM and then we're going to run the ASDM launcher.jar so program files x86 Cisco systems ASDM and run the launcher um, we want to put the IP address of the device and in the default config it does not have any uh, security on there so my certificate was put in there properly, so it actually let me connect. If you cannot connect, then that means your certificate is not in there properly, and it is not happy with you. So uh, we do not want to call home. So basically the way this tool works is if we look at our running config on the device, this tool basically pulls the running config up, and then as you configure things, right, say you add some settings, some changes, it pushes those changes back down to the device. So what you're looking at in this GUI is a view of the configuration on the device. Uh, and when you make changes, it pushes the changes down to the device. So it might be entirely possible for you to be moving around and looking at things in here and making changes. I put that in air quotes, which you couldn't see. 
but not actually making changes because uh, you're not connected uh, to the device anymore, which is something that's going to happen to us in a few minutes. So we want to run the startup wizard, right? We're going to modify the existing config. Uh, host name will leave the same. We'll put a uh, password on here, make it Cisco if you're in my lab, so we can get in there later. Uh, we are not going to configure the DMZ interface. Why are we not configuring the DMZ interface? Because our uh, license does not support using the actual DMZ interface, so change that to do not configure. Uh, ports we're going to leave the same. 00 is associated with the VLAN 2, which is going to be the outside VLAN. Uh, so you'll need 00 plugged into the outside for the rich net. Or, yeah, the rich net. 0, uh, 1 through 7 are on the inside ports, so that's fine. We're going to set the IP address on the outside to some pseudo public IP address that I'm going to give you in the lab. These are some fake public IPs I set up to try to make it look like we have actual public IPs. Uh, your inside address, you're going to set to 243.1 uh, because it's going to replace uh, the same IP that was being used uh, on the rich net. That, that limits the amount of changes we need to make on the router. We are going to disable DHCP. And if you don't change these IPs and try to go to the next step, it's going to give you an error. Because these, these IPs, 192.168.1.5, 192.168.1.36, don't match the IP address you're using on your internal interface, which is now 192.168.243.something. I'm going to try to leave them out and see what happens. Yeah, so let me do that. Uh, we want to do uh, port address translation. That's going to do the NAT for us, and it's going to do the overload uh, so that we can get out to the Internet using that one single IP address uh, on the outside. Uh, we want to let, this controls which uh, networks can connect to your ASA. So we're going to put a couple extra in here. One, we're going to put 10.1.1.0, that's not a zero, with a 24-bit mask, right? And then we're also going to put 192.168.243.0. So if we go find our diagram, Go find our diagram. Down here in our lab is 10.1.1.0. Up here, our temporary management PC is going to be 192.168.243.0 after we change the IP address. So those are two places we might need to be able to connect from uh, to manage things. So that's why we're going to put those in there. If you are doing this for the project later on in the class and you're using different subnets, then you're going to need to put in your different subnets uh, that you're using. So this needs to be whatever you're using. And if you're not sure what you need, you can always be super lame and say, hey, let anybody connect from anywhere. That will let anybody connect from anywhere on the inside interface, which, you know, like I said, super lame, uh, but not really a problem for now in the lab. So you can do that if you want to make sure uh, that you can connect. This tells us all the different things we're going to configure, so then we're going to hit finish. We're going to hit finish, and it's going to say, hey, please wait while ASDM is delivering the command to the device. And it's going to do this for a while, and it, we're going to wait for a while. And after a while, you're going to be like, this is taking a really long time. It should be taking this long. And I'm going to say, hey, look up here. It says you're connected to 192.168.1.1, uh, but we changed the internal IP address to 192.168.243.1. So what we need to do is after this has been going for a while, not too long, we need to go do show run at the console to see that our changes took effect. So we look, our VLAN 1 has the new IP address, 192.168.243.1. Our VLAN 2 has the uh, other IP address, the public IP address. All of our changes are in there. So we have uh, connected now. So basically since we changed our internal IP address, and we're trying to connect to 192.168.1.1 still, what we need to do is kill all these things and then reconnect to the new IP address. So basically, kill out of this window. I don't want you guy go away. Kill out of this window. Yes, we want to exit. Then, then after you kill that window, you're going to want to do one or two things. One of two things. You can either change this temporary management PC's IP address to be something in the 192.168.243 network and connect directly back to the ASA. 
or you can move your PC back down to your normal VLAN and try to connect back out to the ASA uh, from your normal VLAN. However, there's a couple things that we need to do before it will work from down here. We need to add some routes. Our startup wizard did not ask us about adding routes. I don't know if it was there and I missed it, uh, but we need to add routes. So basically, our ASA needs to have a default route that points out to the internet, and it needs to have a route for the 10 network, 10.1.1.0 we are using, that points to this router interface. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the routes at the command line, which uh, you could do. Or if you leave your management PC temporarily connected to the ASA and configure it with a 243. something IP address, you could also connect to um, the ASA back with the, the GUI and do that. I'm not going to do that because a lot of reasons. But anyway, so uh, we need to add some routes. So I'm going to do the command line because I like the command line. And the command to add routes, uh, routes. Then you put the direction of the route needs to go. So this is going to be my static route for my inside networks. So basically I have those networks on the inside and you need to send that traffic to whatever the 192.168.243 address of your router is. So it might be something like 106. Right, then you need to do the route on the outside. And that needs to be the all zeros route the route that matches anything, the default route, and we want to send that to the IP address that I've told you to use for the outside's gateway, which in this case, I think it's going to be, yeah, I use 12.13.14. So my gateway on the 12 network, 12.13.14.1. So that would be my gateway uh, to get out of the network. So that was the route I needed to add for that. So at this point, your ASA should be configured enough uh, that if you launch this again, you put in the proper IP address, you put in the password we set, you should be able to connect. It's not going to work for me because I did not uh, re-IP my host and move things around uh, because of the way I'm recording the podcast. But in theory, uh, after you did those things, moved your host back to the right place. What's the right place? Well, let's go back to the map. You can leave it plugged in here to the ASA directly. If you do that, it needs to have a 192.168.243 that's something IP, or you can put it back down here on your, your normal connection with the host, with the uh, switch, make sure it gets an IP address in your 10.1.1.0 network, and you should be able to connect from there. So uh, once you do all those things, if you try to connect, it should work. Another note, uh, this podcast was mainly written for the lab, so you need to take these concepts and apply them in a slightly different way to match your IP address scheme that you're using for the project if you're currently trying to work on the project and trying to configure the ASA. These specific IP addresses match what we do in the lab. What you need to do in the project, the IP addresses will be different. Uh, so keep that in mind as you're configuring things.